Hi, I'm Bill Gord. I'm a storyteller and the host of our series of folk tales. And you're listening to Saraswati playing the veena, an instrument from India. And we're sharing a story today from southern India called A Flowering Tree. Long ago, in a little village, two sisters were talking, Gitaka and Laletheka, talking about their mom and how hard she worked all the time, just doing little jobs here and there and here and there, and barely getting enough money for them, for their family. Never very happy. It was too hard, all that work. Gitaka had an idea. She said, you know, sister, I think if we could make some money, then our mother wouldn't have to work so hard and she would be happier. And I have an idea. I can turn into a flowering tree and then we can gather the flowers and sell them and we'll have some money. And her sister said, how in the world could you do that? Well, listen, first you go and prepare you clean the whole house and all this area around us, all of it. And I will sit here under the tree and find the silence, the center of it all. I will sit here. And when you get all ready, you come with two pitchers of water. Be sure not to let your fingernails go into the water. Two pitchers of clean water. And then I'll tell you what to do. And Lalitha said, okay. And she started cleaning. And Gitaka sat under the tree and found the silence. And she sat and sat. And her sister cleaned and cleaned and got the water and made sure her fingernails did not touch the water. And she came and said, what now? Now, you pour one pitcher of water over me. I will turn into the tree, the flowering tree. And then you gather as many flowers as you want. But be very careful. Do not tear any leaves. Do not break any twigs. Careful, careful, careful. And after you gather the flowers, take the other pitcher and pour it onto me, the water. And I will turn back into me. Okay, now. And so Lalitaka took the pitcher and poured the water on her sister. Oh. Her sister began turning into a tree. The tree began to flower. Beautiful flowers, fragrant flowers, like no one had ever seen before. And she started gathering flower after flower after flower, carefully plucking and picking them one by one by one, making sure not to break a twig, not to tear a leaf, picking flower after flower after flower after flower after flower after flower after flower. After flower. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. And then she took the other pitcher and poured it on the tree. And there was Gitaka all over again. 
She said, see, sister, it worked. Now let's make garlands. And they made beautiful flower garlands, beautiful flower garlands. Now, go, oh, I've got an idea. Why don't you go near the king's palace? Because they'll have some money there. And maybe they'll buy some of the flowers. So, Lalitha Kao went in front of the king's palace and called out, flowers, flowers, flowers. And it so happened that the king's youngest daughter, Nila, looked out the window. Ooh, those are great looking flowers. I want them. Mama, get me those flowers. I want them now. Get those flowers for me. Well, oh, they are pretty. How many do you want, daughter? I want all of them. Well, ask the girl how much the flowers cost. And Nila called out her window, how much are those flowers? And Lalita Kat said, well, we never thought of whatever you, you wish to pay. And Nila said, well, I want all the flowers. Here's some money. And she threw some out down onto the ground. And Lalita Kat passed the flowers up to the princess and gathered the money from the ground and took it back to her sister. Shall we show Mama? No, 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 Mama might get mad and we should wait till we have more money. So they did this day after day after day and gathered more flowers and sold more garlands and you know who wanted the garlands of flowers every time? Neela, 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 Neela. I want more, I want more flowers. Well, Neela has a brother, the prince, and he saw all these beautiful flowers. And he looked down and he saw who was selling them and he thought, I've never seen flowers like that. I wonder where they come from. And he followed Lalitha Ka back, but there was no tree with flowers like that, not at all. And he wondered about it. And the next morning, he woke up very early and he went near their house and he climbed up into the tree and he waited. And sure enough, here comes the younger sister. He had never seen her before. Kitaka sat under the tree. Her sister started cleaning all around, all around, all around. And the prince watched. And what did he see? The sister poured water on her little sister. And he watched as her sister turned into a flowering tree. And he was swallowed up in the amazement of that moment. The tree grew and grew and the flowers grew and grew and the prince watched and watched in his heart filled with the aroma of those flowers. His heart filled with the feelings that were there. And he watched as all the flowers were gathered. And he watched as the water was poured on the tree. And Githyaka was herself again. And he watched as they walked away to make the garlands. And he crept down the tree and he could not speak. He went back to the palace in a daze. And he just sat in his room for the rest of the day. And then the rest of the next day. And his father came in and said, what's going on? He said, the prince said, I have found the one I should be with. I have found the one that I should always be with, Father. And he told the king where she lived, and the king said, all right, let me talk to the girl's mother. So he sent one of his people to go get the mother. 
And the mother thought, what? I'm going to the palace? I'm not supposed to go to... Why am I going to the palace? I didn't do anything wrong. I've just been doing my work. I've just been... I wonder if my girls did something. I hope they didn't mess up things. Oh no, why am I going to the palace? I'm not, I shouldn't go to the palace. But you got brought in. And the king said, I want to talk to you about your daughters, and especially your youngest daughter. What? What did she do? I, I, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. My daughters, I, you know, I have to work all the time. I'm not sure what they're doing all the time. And maybe they've been causing trouble. I'm really sorry. They won't trouble you anymore. Don't worry. They won't trouble you anymore. And the king says, no, 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 no. They're not troubling me. My son wants to marry your youngest daughter. What? No, what? Go and talk to your daughters and I will send the word when the wedding should be. What? Go. And the mother still could not believe what was going on and she went and she saw her daughters and she said, what have you been doing? Now the king's suddenly talking about the two of you. How are you, what were you doing near the palace? What is going on around here? And they said, mother, we're trying to help you. What, you're trying to help me? Get me in trouble with the king? What is going on? I always have to work so hard. You're not helping at all. You're just making it harder for me and harder and harder. And they said, no, 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 mother. Look at this money. And they held up the money they had collected that whole last week. Where did you get that money? Did you steal it? No, 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 mother. I, I became... I became a tree and it had flowers and we sold the flowers to the to the king's little daughter. That's how we got the money. And now you don't have to work so much. We we have money for you. What? That's not possible. You can't turn into a tree. Well, I'll have to show you then, mother. And so the older sister started cleaning up all around. And Gitaka sat under the tree and moved into the silence and she became a flowering tree the flowering tree again and the mother watched what what and they gathered the, the flowers oh so carefully they didn't break a twig they didn't tear a leaf and she poured the other water and she turned back into herself, and the mother now said, Whoa, this is unbelievable. And that's what the king was talking about. He said, The prince wants to marry you. Now I understand. And so, they were married. And they moved into their own little place. But you see, they had come together through those moments of silence and beauty. And they didn't know how to talk to each other yet. And there they were in the room, and neither of them said a thing. And she wondered, why did I marry this prince? What? What is going on? And the prince, well, he didn't say anything. And she said, so we're married now. What, what's going on? And this had gone on for several days. And he said, because you're not making the flowers. And she said, what are you talking about? He said, you, you've not been making the flowers. You've not been becoming the tree. And she said, becoming the tree? I can't become a tree. What are you talking about? I'm just a person. He said, oh, no, 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 no. I saw you. I climbed the tree near your house, and I watched, and I could feel you, and I entered the silence of the silence. I understand that. And I miss that, and I need that, and we need that together. 
And she said, very well. Clean up this whole house as carefully as you can and bring two pitchers of water and pour one on me before and one on me after. And be careful, be careful, be careful. Do not break a twig or tear a leaf. Be careful. And he said, oh, you know I will. And so he prepared and she sat in her silence and meditated and sat and there's one pitcher of water and she starts to grow into the tree, into the tree, into the tree, into the tree. There she grows into the tree and the tree starts flowering right there in their little house, a flowering tree in the house. And he starts picking the flowers and covering the room, covering the floors, covering the bed, covering everything with beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flowers. And when the room is filled with flowers, he takes the other pitcher and pours it on her and she is back again. And they sleep under the flowers and they find their love And they are together, and they are happy. But Neela, his little sister, is missing the flowers that she used to get every day. And she notices all these flowers piling up next to her brother's house. And she says to the queen, Mother, Mother, I don't get any flowers anymore. All the flowers, look at all those flowers outside the house over there. I should get some of those flowers. Why don't I get any flowers anymore? And then she decided, Neela decided to peek in through the window and she saw her new sister become the flowering tree. How can I ever have that? And the days went by and Neela got an idea. And Neela came to her new sister. Kitaka, I want you, us to be real sisters. And that way, join us. Some of my friends and I, we're going to take our swings and go to the orchard and swing and swing. And you play with us so that we can be like real sisters. Will you come? And Gidaka said, okay, sure. So they went together and they took their swings and they swung from the trees, branches, and they were having a great time. All these friends of Neela's. And Neela said, but, but wait, it's getting late in the day. We, we need flowers in our hair. We need flowers in our, oh, everybody, you're not going to believe this, but it's true. Only I have a sister, a new sister, and the new sister can become a tree and make flowers for all of us. Yep. Gitaka said, no, no, I'm just a person. Oh, sure, you're just a person. I've seen you turn into the tree, but now, just for my brother, I used to get all the flowers, and now he gets all the flowers. Yes, and so... Kitaka said, okay, 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 okay. Clean up around here, all of you girls. Two pitchers of water. Make sure your fingernails do not touch the water and I will sit in the silence. Then pour one pitcher on me, I will become the flowering tree. You pluck flowers, be very careful. Do not tear a leaf, do not break a twig. Just pick the flowers you want and then pour the water back on me and I'll become me again. And so she sat in the silence and Neela and her friends, well, they sort of cleaned up around there a little bit, but they were ready to go. And so they got one pitcher of water and they kind of splashed it on her. And she became sort of a flowering tree there were flowers all right, but they weren't, it wasn't a full tree. 
and Neela and the girls kind of just grabbed all the flowers and the twigs were breaking, the leaves were tearing. And then a storm came up, a big storm. The lightning started flashing, thunder started roaring. And Neela said, whoa, whoa, hey, let's get out of here before the storm hits. Oh, she's still a tree. And before they ran off, they grabbed the other pitcher and just splashed it on the tree and ran off. And she did not turn back in to the young woman she had always been. She didn't have feet. Her arms were just little stumps and she could barely crawl. And she made her way across the ground and she rolled oh, down into a ditch next to the road. Now what, now what? And the water came and carried her a little bit, but she, oh, down there. Some ox carts drove by and the oxmen looked down, but they just drove on. But the one in the last ox cart looked down and saw her, and he said, oh my, you poor, poor woman, let me help you. And he lifted her and he wrapped her up, and he said, you can't walk, you can't hold anything. He put her carefully in the back of his wagon and they rode along. And they came into another village, and there, there was a pavilion, a kind of platform with a roof on it and a little benches around. And he said, I can't stay with you, but I can leave you here, and so someone will help you, and at least the rain won't fall, you can be dry. And I've covered you now, you can stay warm. And he moved on. And Gitaka was there sad as sad as sad can be. And it so happened that this village where she was now was where the older daughter of the king lived. We haven't talked about her before, but because she was already gone and married, and she lives in this village that we are in now. And some of her servants looked out the window and saw Kitaka in there and they saw her face and they knew who she was and they said to the queen, hey, your brother's wife is out there in the pavilion. She, it looks like she's badly hurt. Can we bring her in? Of course. And they brought her in and they cleaned her wounds, but they couldn't give her arms. They couldn't give her legs or feet. And they gave her a little bed and they gave her food and drink. Now, while all this was happening, the prince came home and looked around. And he went to the queen and said, where's my wife? I don't know. She, oh, oh, you know what? She went with your sister. They went swinging in, in the uh, orchards. That's what it is. So he went to Neela and said, Neela, where's my wife? She said, I don't know. We were all playing and then like the storm came, so we all just ran up. She's probably in your house. No, she's not. Well, I don't know what happened to her. And he sat in his house. And now it was a kind of silence, not the silence he loved. It was a different kind of silence of being so alone like he hadn't felt in a very, very long time. And he didn't want to be there anymore, but he didn't want to take the chance to miss her, and he sat in there for a week, for two weeks, and he could not stay in that house a moment longer. And he just put on an old robe and got rid of his clothes and started wandering leading the life of a wanderer. And he wandered and wandered and wandered around. And he ended up in the village of his older sister. And he ended up sitting in that same pavilion. 
And the servants noticed him and they said, your brother's out there. Doesn't quite look like your brother, but we're sure it's him, but he's in a robe and he's all dirty and dusty. And the sister ran out and said, brother, brother, come inside, come inside. What's going on? What's wrong? He could not speak. He could not speak. She let him in. She gave him food. She made a room for him. The servant sat with him each night, sang to him, massaged him, tried to make him feel better, but nothing. He would not speak. And so they moved Kitaka from her couch to the foot of his bed. And he was just lying there. And he looked down and she looked up. There she was. It was the face of the woman he loved. And he said, Kita, what happened? And she said, she told what happened. What can we do for you? Oh, could it work? Could it work again? I remember what we would do. I'll prepare the room. I'll prepare the room for you. You move into the silence. I will heal you. I will fix your leaves, your twigs. And so he prepared the room. And he got two pitchers of water and he made sure his fingernails did not touch the water. And he poured it onto her. And she turned in to the flowering tree with broken leaf twigs and torn leaves. But he brought them together, one after another, 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 after another. And that flowering tree grew bigger and bigger and every branch started making new flowers and new leaves. It filled their room, it filled that room. And the smell went out the windows. People walking near could smell the flowers. Love was filling that room. And then he took the other pitcher and poured it on her and there she was. Kizaka, complete again. And he said, you're back. And she said, and we're back together. And there they were. And you may wonder with that wonderful ending, what happened to the sister? She was asked to leave. You are not welcome here. You are not welcome here. See what you can find. And Giteka and the prince, they say, lived on and on and on and on in a room full of flowers. That's the story. So we just finished, and I hope you had as much fun as I did. Uh, I sure did, Bill. Story. It's great to hear that story. Yeah, it's a really, uh, it's a thrill to to sit and being able to tell a story with that amazing instrument playing. It just, um, it it carries the story, and so it. it it asks kind of to be told in different ways because of the way you're playing. 
So uh, can you tell us a little more about this instrument, instrument? you're playing? And sure. So some people may watch a video, but many people are just listening. Okay. So if you can both describe this yeah. vena and, and then give a little demo, that'd be fantastic. Sure thing. So the vena is a large wooden acoustic instrument. It has a wooden resonator, hollow resonator on the right, and then a lap gourd, a decorated lap gourd to my left. So I just sit cross-legged on the floor, and then this lap gourd is on my left lap, and the resonator is to my right on the floor. And then there are tuning pegs, there are four strings on top, and then three sympathetic strings, as you can hear it. And then there are 24 frets, like. So there are 24 frets, and then about three and a half octaves. So I could do a lot of bends on the vena. That's what is special about it. It can be meditative. It can be a lot of expression and emotion through the ragas that I play. So the raga is the fundamental concept of the music that I learned, it's original music from southern India. It's called Carnatic music. Okay. Yeah. When did you start playing? That's a very long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was six years old, I when started. When you were six? Yeah. My, Whoa, my mom fantastic. is a Vena player. She's oh, a she vocalist is? and a dancer. So she got me into Vena because she had won a prize, a small Vena that could fit a six-year-old. So I was able to sit down and play on that Vena. And then there was I guess I don't know how she picked the vena for me. I just and, but it's, it's yeah. stuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was stuck the right with me. That's You're it. still playing it. Yeah. So that means because sometimes parents give a kid an instrument and they don't keep playing that. You yeah, know, that's they true. They find a different instrument, or they don't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah, it's and well. It, it stayed with you. Yeah, thank the time goodness. That I was being brought up, you just listen to a parent. You don't question them. So you say, "Play the vena." Okay. Okay. I'll play the vena. <laughs> That's so it. Does it is, was, is it a daily, do you still play every day? Yeah, I do. I play yeah. every day. That's so th there were times when I, when I used to play six to seven hours at a stretch when I was, uh, yeah, learning and I was a teenager. I just played the vena. <laughs> Did you also sing and dance? Not that much. As, not as much as the vena. But I okay. do sing a little bit. I learned a little bit of Bharatanatyam, which is a traditional Southern Indian dance also. Uh-huh. Yeah. Could you sing something with while playing so we could hear sure. how the vocals work yeah. with the so instrument? So I, I could probably sing a little folk song to go That'd with be great. probably the story that we just did. Kadidama jigena kudidana kalya de sharana basavana nene dana sharana basavana nene dana So talk a little bit about how you thought about the music in terms of this story. And by the way, the story is, is a Southern Indian story. Oh yeah, it's, it's a Kannada. It's, it's in the language Kannada, which is from the town, Mysuru, where I was born. So that's there's a lot fantastic. of affinity for this story. That's and the fantastic. song that I just demonstrated is a folk song, a village song, yeah, describing how our typical day in the life of a villager goes so oh, okay. that was a song about okay yeah and so when thinking about or i don't know thinking about it's not quite playing along or yeah, like joining in with the story extemporaneously yes yeah. but so I, I, I could hear as i was telling though you clearly were approaching different parts of the story you kind of did either a variation or a new sequence of, yeah yeah so that it it kind of changed the tones Mood, of the uh, yeah. moods of the story, story as it yes. went, which, which I th for me was a beautiful experience to then tell on top of how that, how that changed. Yeah, uh, so that's a part of raga, so it's up to the artist to really, so to me, it's all about observing you 
and being able to understand, oh, what's Bill going to say next? It's like anticipating and then shifting it right away. So being able to do that <laughs> contextually is very important to complement your storytelling. So, for, And then I was also thinking about, there are about the flowering tree when there is a commonality in that theme. So every time there are flowers and then we were talking about the flowering tree, I used to give... <laughs> in the Ragam Darbari Kannada. So while there is also an energetic expression to it, it's also kind of a little, there's a pathos element to it because it's it's about the girl becoming the flowering tree and then, so it's not, it's not totally happy, happy. It's not yeah, totally, it, so it's kind of in between. It's so a deep yeah. kind of, it's, yeah, right. So there's kind of some trauma in it yes. as well as as kind of amazing, amazing transformation. Wonder. Yeah. Both. Yeah. And then when there is when the prince actually is in a moment where he's able to connect beyond the physical, beyond so where the prince is able to connect spiritually. So I kind of blend that with another ragam. There's a little joy there also, and it's a different level yeah. of connection. So I kind of switched the ragam there. So that's how I observe Great. you, listen, and Great. Well, that's <laughs> fantastic. the ragas on the veena. And thank you very much, and we'll sign off. Hope you've enjoyed the story and our discussion, and see you next time, or hear you next time.